So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use totally standard brushes in Adobe Photoshop to essentially paint on your own textures on type. So I'll show you a few examples up front of different textures that were created using brushes in Photoshop along with some work on the levels. So this one is actually a square pastel brush. And then I have a couple different versions using airbrushes, which give fairly different effects there. This one was done using a triangle pastel, which gave it a really cool, gritty, almost paper-like texture. And then the one on the top here is from a watercolor brush. So these are not the sorts of visuals that you would come to expect from something like a watercolor brush, but that's where using levels comes in to really tweak this up and make it look super special. And if you want to use the exact same font that I'm using in this video, the font is called Old Erica, and it was actually given to me by a company called Heritage Type Co., so I'll place a link to their website in the description where you can actually pick up the font that I use called Old Erica. It's part of the Vintage Font Bundle, which has a bunch of different super duper high quality fonts for sale at a reduced price in a bundle. But of course, you can also buy individual fonts by themselves from this website as well, if that's something that you want to do. And also, of course, if you want to use a different font, feel free to do so. I picked Old Erica as a font because it's really chunky, and that's just something that you're going to want to do for this particular exercise to give yourself some room to work with. So first up, make sure you type out your font, and the font will need to be sized appropriately to really get the good, gritty texture in there because we're using brushes, so obviously the scale of the brush will affect how your overall texture looks. So just for reference, this artboard is 2000 by 2000 pixels with the type taking up the vast majority of the space. And you actually don't even have to rasterize the type for this, but if you want to do that, you can, or you could even import type from Illustrator or something like that. It really doesn't matter. The process should stay the same. So once you have your type ready to go and in your layers palette, just select that type and then hit Control J on a PC or Command J on a Mac to duplicate it. And I will show you the reason for that in just a second. But in the layers palette of Photoshop, click and hold control on a PC or command on a Mac, and then click on the text icon in your layers palette, which will just select that type. And then I'm just going to contract that selection. So to do that, you go to select, and then from select, you go to modify. And from modify, you go to contract. And in my example, I used 15 pixels, but what number you use here is totally up to you. It'll just change how much border your type has on it before the texture kicks in. So I'm gonna hit okay on 15 and then back over to the layers palette. But this time I'm going all the way down to the bottom where you will see an icon that looks like a rectangle with a circle in the middle to add a layer mask, just click that. And once you do, I'm gonna turn off this duplicate so we can see this under here. You can see that it selected out just the inner portion of that type, but we want essentially the opposite. So this time in your layers palette, click on the mask that was created. So there should be a square that's colored in just to the right of the text. And when you click that, hit control plus I on a PC or command plus I on a Mac, which will invert the mask, which will give you an outline as opposed to just the fill section. And of course, if you ever want to turn off a mask, you can just hold shift and click on it to quickly see what you're up to. So now what I'm going to do is turn on the type below the visibility of the type that's below that outline. Once again, by clicking on the eyeball icon in the layers palette, and then I'm also going to add a layer mask to this. So back down to the menu at the bottom, click add a layer mask in there, which will add that layer mask. And I'm adding a layer mask because that's where we're going to paint in our texture. So what I like to do is just have my fill set to black and the alternative set to white. That'll be very, very helpful for this. And also hitting D on your keyboard will do that by default. And hitting X on your keyboard will flip the foreground and background fill colors. So you actually want black to be in the front. So you can just flip that until black is in the front by using X on your keyboard. And then I'm going to hit B on my keyboard to select the brush tool. Alternatively, you can just click on the brush tool in your toolbar and then click in the top menu to open the brush preset picker. So from here are where all of the different brushes in Photoshop tend to live. And you can just go through here and find one that looks like it should have some really cool texture. The ones that I have found to work the best tend to be watercolors as well as pastels. And these should all be totally default. So. I assume this square charcoal would probably work pretty well. There's some different watercolors here that also work really well. And I use these airbrushes, the soft low density and the hard low density grainy. 
So all the airbrushes looked really cool. They look very speckly and spattery if that's the look you're going for. But I'm actually going to continue going down here until I get to the square pastel because this is something that I don't think most people would expect to turn into a really good high contrast texture, but the way we're doing this will make it happen. So feel free to pick whatever you want to use. I'm going to use a square pastel, but you can totally play around with all sorts of different textures in here as much as you want. So I'm going to click that to select it, and then it'll bring up the square pastel in my screen. And what I like to do is use the left and the right brackets on my keyboard to very, very quickly make that brush smaller or larger because obviously the scale of your brush will determine how it looks. I found for the pastel, the square pastel that I'm using, I like it to be almost as large as the font itself in terms of the square size, but up to you how you want that to look. And then you can either just click and hold and drag around some texture, or alternatively, you can just click a bunch of times. What method works the best will obviously change depending on what sort of a texture your brush has. And of course, if you're using a pen tablet, or something like that, you'll have a lot more control over how this looks. I'm using a mouse, which is why I'm clicking and holding and just clicking my mouse a bunch of times like I am. But with this, what I like to do is just brush on little areas of texture on the type. And I start by just getting a good starting point where I actually, if you see some different contrast between the really bright and the darker areas, in terms of the square pastel, that's a look that I really liked. So I'm purposely trying to make that happen. If you're using a watercolor brush, which we can do after this, just as an example, you might not want that to be quite as pronounced. And also if you want to remove things that you have filled in in this mask, just hit X on your keyboard to bring white to the foreground as opposed to the background. And then when you click a few times on here, it'll actually remove that texture as opposed to adding it back in. So you can go in here and start removing stuff as opposed to adding it back in totally up to you. And also while you have the white in the foreground, you can hit alt backspace or option backspace on a Mac to totally start over fresh because it just resets your entire mask to be completely white once again. And then you can hit X to switch back to black and start painting in some of these textures. So I'm just going to try to make this look interesting pretty fast in a way that I think should work well for the square pastel. Like I said, I like having really defined borders on this. For whatever reason, it just kind of looks good to me because it looks sort of like a weird photocopy. And I just find that to be a fun look. So I'm just trying to go through here pretty quick. I'm just clicking, holding, and kind of wiggling my mouse a few times. And I'm going to switch this a little bit to start making some more contrasting areas here in terms of how this looks. And of course, you can use your brackets to continue to change the size of your brush to get even more distinctive looks. It can make it a little bit harder to make it seem entirely consistent when you do that, but up to you how you want your overall end product to look, so to speak. So this is getting to a point where I think it's pretty close to being done. I'm just going to add in a few more sort of highlights here in various areas where I think it might look kind of interesting to give each letter a super unique look. So that should be it for me. And like I said, I think I'll do a very quick one using a watercolor brush after this if you want to check out what that looks like as well. But what you do next is actually use levels, which will allow you to really tweak and customize how this texture looks on your mask. So make sure your mask is still selected in the text that you were using in your layers palette. And then while that mask is selected and it will have a border around it, letting you know that it's selected, just hit control L on your keyboard. If you're using a PC or command L on your keyboard, if you're using a Mac, which will bring up the levels window right here. And the only thing we're going to be touching are these three arrows. So there's one at the bottom here, there's one in the middle, and there's one at the top. And essentially, the further to the left you go, the darker the levels are. The further to the right, they are the highlights. So these are the dark shadows. The middle one is essentially the midtones. And then the one up here are the highlights. And when I do this, I almost always do it in the exact same way. But obviously, do this however you think looks awesome or the best for you. Is I click on the right one the right arrow here, and I just start dragging that off to the left. And then I bring the middle arrow closer to the right, which really just pumps up the contrast. And I just slowly but surely push these together or pull them apart until this starts looking the way that I want it to. And at the end, I tend to move the darkest shadow around to see how it's looking overall here. So up to you how you think things look. If you find yourself losing a bunch of the texture that you really liked, just move that middle one closer to the left. And then you can kind of tweak and push these together a little bit until it gets looking kind of close to what you want. I tend to like pretty stark contrasts when I'm doing this. 
So there's not a lot of gray colors, but that's personal preference entirely. So just move these around until you get it to a point where you have a really cool texture that you think is interesting. And you can also toggle the preview on and off between where you started and where you ended up. And once you're done and ready to go, you can just hit OK. So that's a really fast and easy way to make a really interesting looking texture by using a totally standard brush inside Photoshop. And I'll just very, very quickly duplicate this to do a brand new one using a watercolor brush. So I hit X on my keyboard to have white be the foreground. I'm hitting Alt or Option and then Backspace to reset this, hitting X again to put black in my foreground. And then I'll hit B to bring up the brush, go back over here, and I will scroll up a bit until I find some watercolors that I think should be kind of cool. And for the watercolor, I'm going to use, let's say, watercolor salt, which should be a good one. I think I've used that one before. I think it's a bunch of really tiny little dots. I'm just using my bracket keys to make this bigger. And then I'm clicking and holding and adding quite a bit of this watercolor salt. It's very faint on my screen, so it'll be pretty hard for you to see, at least most likely. But once we pump up those levels using levels, you should see this much, much more apparently. So I'm just going to do a quick rough attempt. I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller to add in some kind of highlights that'll be a little bit more apparent on the text to make this look as good as I can. And of course, you can contrast directionally to only do texture on like the right side of the text if you want it to look faded as if it's faded from a certain direction. And once you get that looking pretty good, just go back over to the layers palette, click on that mask, hit Control L or Command L to bring up levels and then quickly go through here and just tweak these until you get it looking a way that you like. So this is a very, very different look than what we had previously. So it's almost like an old sign where paint had been eroded off over time and gave the appearance a very weathered look. So that's really it for this video. I do hope you found it to be helpful. I think this is a really fun way to make your text look far more unique and custom than just typing it out or even just doing a typical texture over the entire thing. So if you did find this video to be helpful, please hit the thumbs up button to like the video and let me know that it was helpful to you. Also, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comments section. Either I or someone else can give you some feedback or help depending on what you're looking for. And if you do want to see more stuff like this in the future, please consider subscribing. I do my best to keep creating new content just like this. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.